Let's open this thing up, shall we? So if you guys are getting a little tired of me doing these resin printer reviews, don't worry, I kind of am too. Uh, don't think I'll be doing many in the future, at least not until uh, there's some pretty big changes in the technology in these things, because so far a lot of the ones that I've reviewed lately are all kind of the same. But there are a few things in this that I'm really excited to test out. Uh, they have been working at improving the technology a little bit. Uh, there is a new kind of FEP layer in here that is supposed to be even less sticky than the old layer, so you should be able to pull up on prints easier without the risk of having it pull off the build plate. Uh, there's also a new LCD. Uh, that's a new improvement that is, is getting pretty popular in the resin printing world. Instead of the traditional LCD that has got a Bayer filter or an RGB filter, uh, this does not. There's no filter at all, which supposedly lets about three times as much UV light through. So uh, that, in theory, will give you three times the print speeds, but we'll find out. All right, well, I haven't mentioned it yet, but this is the Elegoo Mars 2P. I think the P is for performance because of the faster print speeds. Ah, there you go. The P is for pro. Um, but one of the other reasons that I accepted this from Elegoo Mars to do a review on is that uh, they've made some improvements that I think uh, that we've specifically called out. So I don't know if they're listening to me specifically or the industry in general. But uh, first thing, you'll notice there is a USB port right on the front of it. Uh, I love that. Uh, the other big improvement, specifically to this channel that I'm pretty excited about, is they actually put a good linear rail system in here. Uh, so there will be no need to upgrade this as far as I can tell. This looks like it's going to be quite solid. Uh, in fact, the linear rail system they put in here is pretty beefy. I think it might be, I don't know, 15 millimeter, 20 millimeter, something like that. We'll measure it when we take it apart. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to be pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, let's fire it up and see how it does. I love this blood red housing. That is really cool. I think this is a seal for this edge here to help it from light leak. That's cool. Let's put that on. Interesting. It's a little cheesy, to be honest. It's not a great fit. Um, I'm sure if you're storing stuff in here for a while, it's probably a good idea. Uh, but I have a feeling it's just gonna pull off every time I try and use it. So I'm gonna keep it off for now. The color of this anodizing is a little strange. Uh, it's showing up a little bit orange, I think, on the camera, but in reality, it's maybe more closer to pink than it is orange or red. I don't mind it, though. It's a really nice sandblasted texture on this guy. I feel like I'll get pretty good grip with that. I like that. Now, this is, I think, the second time Elegoo has sent me a skin-colored resin. I don't, I don't know if they have certain expectations of the kind of things I use this printer for, or if they're just having a laugh, but whatever. Here it is. If I've had to freshly shake up the resin, I always let it sit for probably at least half an hour, maybe even an hour to let all the bubbles rise to the top and pop because otherwise you will find little voids in your print. And the cat clearly hates voids. Make sure you do that waiting with the lid on, both for HVOCs and to not let the resin cure. Cat hair everywhere. Well, 
First impressions, not too bad. But the real question is, how does it compare to the old one? Well, there you go, way faster. I think they advertise three times as fast, but I would say more realistically, you're gonna get anywhere between a third and twice as fast, which is still a pretty good improvement. I think the things still slowing it down actually aren't the exposure times. Those seem to be really, really quick. Um, but the movement speed of the Z axis is actually a little slower than the old one. And I'm sure those are just presets you can change in the slicer software. And I may have to experiment with that and see just how fast of a print we can get away with. But I mean, exposure times per layer went from like eight seconds to two, two and a half seconds, which is pretty incredible. But you know what channel you're watching, we gotta take this thing apart. But before we do, I wanna see if I can see the difference in the LCD screen. Now to take these pictures, I'm using an old Sony camera. I pulled all the UV filters off, so it should be a bit more sensitive to the UV light that these LEDs are putting out. But to be honest, to my eye, I'm not seeing a big difference between the two light levels here. I'll say up front, I'm not totally sure this is a valid test. I don't actually know how much UV light this camera is receiving even without the filter. And clearly the exposure times are way lower, so something is going on here. Uh, but the print quality is fantastic as you'd expect from an Elegoo at this point. Uh, and I really like the improvements they've done to the linear rail system uh, and the overall design is pretty sweet. All right, enough of my first impressions. Let's pull this thing apart. Well, we got some fairly interesting things and some pretty standard things as well. Uh, motor drivers here, we got a display driver, FPGA here. Uh, and some JTAG connectors for programming. These things probably all just go into some sort of jig that's got pogo pins and programs all the boards at once. Nothing uh, that really stands out on this board, but what it's mounted to is a little more interesting. If you've been watching these videos, you'll see that most of the time these boards are mounted on just like a metal L bracket or something, but they've actually gone and injection molded a few pieces. Um, I'm particularly interested in that right now because I'm working on doing some injection molding myself. Um, it's a, it's a bigger expense and they expect sort of a bigger run of products to be able to do that and have it be affordable. Uh, so that is kind of interesting. What's also interesting is the LED array in there. I don't think I've seen one like that before. Looks kind of unique. I'll see if I get a close up picture for it. Uh, also, you see, I thought this was some sort of uh, like screen printing gone wrong or something, but this is their thermal paste. Um, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. Maybe they missed a little bit. Also, you notice they've got an active carbon filter in here. It's kind of cool. Um, you know, I wonder if pulling the air out of the chamber for the printer and running it through a carbon filter and exhausting it out of the bottom of the printer is really efficient, or if it would be better if it just had no air movement at all and no filtering. Um, yeah, I don't know, just something I'm curious about. And you can see the USB port on the front. Uh, this is an extra expense for Elegoo to make, uh, but boards are relatively cheap. I'm surprised they didn't do that sooner. And I like seeing the hot melt glue on everything to keep it all in place for shipping. You'd be surprised how many of these connectors come out in shipping if you don't do that. And here's another new addition that I haven't seen before. They got a little squirrel cage fan in here to do all the cooling for the LEDs. Uh, I think one of the things that they're advertising is that it is a bit quieter and. Uh, that's been my experience for sure. It is quieter than the original Elegoo Mars. Uh, still kind of funny that they're using such a small fan though. They could run a fan, you know, twice this large and half the speed and it would be much quieter and move the same amount of air. Um, you know, it probably cost them another dollar and a half in parts. So I don't really know why they do that. Maybe we'll look for that in the next version. Uh, the screen is definitely a bit bigger than the original Elegoo as well. I like that. 
And of course, the best thing about this printer is this nice linear rail. Uh, this is way, way better than what they had put in there before. This is a serious piece of gear. Uh, you know, if you were to buy a high quality one of these, uh, it would probably cost from the manufacturer at that length, $20, $25. And for a single component like this is really expensive. Now, I'm sure that this is a cheaper version, um, but it seems stiff and it's going to hold up way better than what they had in there before. So I like to see that. Well, there you go. That's about what I expect from Elegoo these days. It's an excellent printer and a pretty fantastic price. Uh, you really can't go wrong with one of these things, in my opinion. If you don't have a resin printer and you're into really small, detailed models, this is the way to go. But that's going to do it for today. Don't forget to check out our Redbubble page. We've got some excellent new designs, including this sweet ghost death metal unicorn. So go check it out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.